Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to the first episode of 2024 of Friday morning at the Funhouse alongside Mr. Martin Popoff. Yes. Happy New Year, my friend. Yes. Great seeing you again. This is really yes. cool. Getting back in the saddle. Yes. But uh, yeah, lots uh, lots going on. It's uh, for the weather report. First one of the year. It's definitely very cold. I, I'm talking to my parents out in Trail BC. They're getting uh, minus 29 Celsius this morning going down to minus 33. And I checked that. So it's minus 27.4 Fahrenheit. Uh, they're getting out. In That's cold. We're getting a pretty cool cold too. And uh, I'm going to see uh, my buddy Bill in the long-term care home. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll probably show him a little bit of our show actually uh, uh, t today, but uh, so I'm going to see Bill and I'm going to see the bills. So we've got the mittens out for, uh, uh, for we're double going bills. bills. All right. There yeah. we go. We're going on, on an overnight, probably stay in Fort Erie. And then, um, and then see that game, which is also going to be cold. It's about minus five or something that uh, that's going to be standing around in that uh, that orchard park. Wow, for yeah, for four tough. hours, three hours, yeah. Oof. Well, I mean, winter is here. Yeah, it's uh, it's cold this morning, but I think we're going to get up to forty five today and fifty tomorrow, and then it's going to go back to the twenties and thirties yeah. for like a bunch of days. And I think we get more snow. Did you get all that snow recently? We didn't get a lot of snow. No, I think we're going to get that. The, we're both probably going to get that cold blast. Apparently yeah. that thing will keep moving. Uh, and, and did you know this? I mean, that Kansas city uh, game on Sunday night or no Saturday night uh, is, is slated to be possibly the third coldest game in NFL history. So. History. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's that's moving its way across, and uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, we got a foot of snow here, Martin, last weekend. Wow, foot! Wow. And then the day after, it warmed up a little bit, and then we got a full day of rain, and like everything melted. Yeah. So all we had were like floods and lakes and pools all over the place. So there's, I mean, there's little patches of snow still here, but uh, yeah, it's 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 doing this thing again, Martin. Up and down, yeah. up and down. Extreme temperature, cold, warm, cold, warm. Snow, rain, this, whatever. So it's winter. Yeah. Anyway, today uh, our first episode of the year, we decided to dedicate to one guy who celebrated his 69th birthday just two days ago and it's a guy we love a lot here on the channel we know you all watching love him a lot mr michael shanker the man with the flying v uh born of january 10th 1955 and he turned 69 martin i'm like we're so used to saying about all of our heroes who are in their 70s and in 80s and i i know did, did adult take i'm like shanker is still not 70 years old yet i'm like but then again we forget yeah how young he but was it, on Lonesome Crow. Yeah. And, and he's putting us to shame because he looks better than we do. I mean, he is so <laughs> fit. He looks young and he's just prolific and he's doing all this stuff. Yeah. He's, he's just been one of those miracle guys, you know, after the, after the troubled psychological, whatever period. Did you think we'd be period. saying that 25 years ago? Right? I know. I know. And just making tons of albums. And, uh, you know, I know not getting ahead of ourselves, but we're looking at the Michael Shanker group today and I, and you just go through all this stuff and that, that really drives me crazy. Like all the different names he's got things under or whatever, but we've, we've honed it down, but I'll let you explain a little more. Yeah. So, uh, so we decided to kind of pay tribute to Michael Shanker today, but specifically look at, uh, the, early part of the Michael Schenker group catalog or earlier because they're like Martin said there are all these albums that are either Michael Schenker Michael Schenker group Temple of Rock Michael Schenker Fest Michael Schenker group again but it's got a million people playing on it blah 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 so what we did how what was the number of albums we decided to draw from we're doing I think our there were there were eight eight yeah, albums. There, there were essentially eight that seemed to be true Michael Schenker group and when we say true I mean the lineup's changing all the time anyways but but they seem to be the truest where you think, okay, this is a Michael Schenker group album rather than those other things. Yeah. Yeah. So we decided yeah. to pick each our 10 favorite songs from those albums, uh, which was kind of a fun exercise because I hadn't done this in a while and, uh, and draw from those albums. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny because before we decided to kind of, uh, just stick to a certain number of albums. I started looking at like all these Michael Schenker Fest albums and Temple of Rock albums. And I'm like, Jesus, there's a lot of albums here. And then, yeah. you know, I mean, we've said this multiple times. It's like, how many times do you look at some of the later albums that maybe you kind of, we kind of take for granted and you look at the track list and you're like, God, I know I've heard this album like 10 times, but I couldn't tell you how one of these songs go. Yeah. 
Exactly. And it's like, yeah. you know, and there's just so many of them. So we uh, we decided to limit it to the eight albums and we've we've ranked our 10 favorite songs in order of preference. So we'll start at uh, you want to do uh, two at a time, Martin. We'll okay. go one through one. Sounds good. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. And one thing I want to head off at the past people now that I've done a Saxon and a Uri Heat book, people ask me to do a Michael Shanker book more than anything. But um, I have put everything I have from Michael Schenker, all the interview stuff into these two UFO books, and especially this one. Um, this we almost named uh, a, a Michael Schenker group somewhere in the title as well, because every single factoid of Michael Schenker that I know or have up to wherever this came out two years ago, one year ago, is all in there. So I got nothing left to do a Michael Schenker group. I mean, I, I could if I got way more interviews, but uh, anyways, it's all in there. So, okay, so two at a time. Um, so favorite tracks in reverse order. Um, this exercise, I thought I would have a little bit of a harder time in terms of, um, so it's a bit of a spoiler alert in terms of, because I really like those later Michael Schenker group albums. And I thought it had more tracks on here, but then I kept going back and the nostalgia tracks just kept bumping them and bumping them and bumping them. I know I've got a couple in my honorable mentions, but I am going to start with one from an arachnophobiac. And I'm going to start with the title track from this because it is a weird loopy song. It's kind of a, it's kind of um it's Euro, but it's it's very accessible, which is exactly what we think of uh, with Michael Schenker. And it's this yeah. weird thing about a spider infestation. Um, the, the lyrics are really clear and they're really well enunciated. I love the band on this as, as well. Um, you know, it's just and, and the recording is really kind of like smooth and commercial. Uh, but yeah, my first one is Arachnophobiac. And then I'm going to also stick with um, uh, an, an old one. I mean, a newer album again with uh, with the strange Be Aware of Scorpions album. And I'm going to go with the first track on here. Um, no Turning Back, which again, it's, it's got this cool pre-chorus, which kind of goes mellow and then it picks up and um I don't know the, these um, these sort of Chris Logan era type albums. Uh, this 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 great era in here has um, almost as much hair metal in it as the Macaul Macaulay Shanker Group albums, but it also has a bit of a uh, groovy Southern rock vibe somehow uh, in there as well. And I just find them really accessible and easy to get into. But as I went through a lot of the albums, I, I kept going, nah, I can't put that in the top 10. Can't put that, can't put that, but they're good albums, right? So yeah, there's my first two, bit of a theme went with the uh, later stuff. Martin, could you hold that CD up again? Can we both be in agreement that that is the worst album cover we're going to see today? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Well, there's some other bad ones too, but you're right. This is just so weird. And what a weird title, eh? Be aware of scorpions, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, yeah know, fall, you know, and, and an arachnophobiac. So he's got, we got spiders, we got scorpions. <laughs> yeah. Why not, yeah. right? Why not? Yeah. Uh, like Martin, uh, to me, this, this wasn't too difficult. And for me, all slightly predictable. But what I found hard was like ranking them in, a, in an order. Because uh, a lot of these songs that I'm going to list today are very, very near and dear to me. So uh, like like this morning, I was like, I, I still had them all kind of jumbled. I'm like, all right, let me arrange this somehow. So the first one I'm going to go with is off of uh, the debut album. It's a song called Into the Arena. Hmm. You know, he does, he's done a fair amount of instrumentals, usually one per album. For the most part, they're pretty good. I still think Into the Arena, out of all of them, is probably still my favorite. It's somewhat heavy. It's got a good chugging riff. It's got a fair amount of lead guitars in it. And it's very melodic. But that's that's Shanker, right? No, Everything he plays is very, very melodic and memorable. Uh, so I, I had to squeeze that in there somewhere. So I put it in number 10. Uh, number 9, I'm going to stay with the same album. And I'm going to go with... Lost Horizons, which is a song we talked about on another episode not too long ago. It's the big, long, moody epic at the end. And uh, I love the guitar work in it. I really like Gary Barden's vocals on it. And like I said, it's dark, it's heavy, it's kind of plodding and doomy. And I love it. Really, really good. I was actually surprised. I did not expect that one to show up in my top 10. But uh, the more I thought about it, the more I couldn't leave it out. So yeah, so two from the debut off the bat for me for 10 and 9. Nice, nice. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. He is very good at the instrumentals. I I couldn't I couldn't put an instrumental in here. I just couldn't justify it kind of thing. But he's great at great at those, right? He knows what he's doing for those. So uh, all right, my my well, I have a theme for my next two as well. Um, this is my favorite Michael Schenker album. 
Yep. And um, yep. so Assault Attack, I picked up Broken Promises uh, off of this. I just love the grooviness. It's got that mm-hmm. it's got that uh, melodic aspect as well. It's just really catchy. Uh, this is one of Martin Birch's best productions ever. It's just vital and to the point. If I was to pick what it sounds like a little bit, I'd say it sounds a bit like Cultosaurus Erectus and Heaven and Hell um, and Fire of Unknown Origin, actually. Uh, this is you know, I, we we always talk about Martin Birch having, um, you know, a variety of sounds. I don't think he has a White Snake album that sounds too much like this. Maybe Ready and Willing, but um, but I think uh, I think here you get this uh, really good mid rangey slap on this album. Um, so yeah, I love Broken Promises. It's uh, it's epic, groovy. It's got a little Aerosmith to it as well. And then I went with uh, Assault Attack, uh, the the title track, which is. Uh, just this roiling circular MC Escher sort of riff that, that goes around, which is really cool. So it's a, it's a, an interesting up-tempo one, but, uh, but Michael, you know, he, he has so much quality and thought put into his riffs. I mean, he does so many riffs, not all of them are like that. And some of them are more accessible than others. This is a not accessible riff. It's right. just a really cool, uh, you know, geometric sort of slide rule sort of song, but uh, really cool, really proggy. Uh, so that's my uh, eight and seven. Uh, yeah, I will agree. My favorite Michael Schenker album. And truth be told, I probably could have put most of this album in this top 10. I I love this production. I think this is my favorite Martin Birch production. It's my favorite Schenker album. It's probably my favorite vocal performance from, uh, from Graham Bonnet. Uh, it's classic. So my number eight is Rocky to the Ground, which is the uh, second one on here. It's snarling. It's angry. Great vocal. Great riff. Just a killer, killer song. Uh, that I had to sneak in here somewhere. And I love your pick. To, uh, Broken Promises is terrific. Um, you'll hear more about that at the end of the episode. But uh, yeah. Um, so that's my number seven. No, sorry, number eight. My number seven is... Uh, hold on. Cry for the Nations from the first album. Love the chorus. It's kind of dark. It's kind of metallic, ultimately very fun. I, I have a real warm spot for this, for the debut album, because uh, I, I remember when I found out that Shanker had left UFO, I was absolutely crushed because UFO were one of my favorite. You know, again, it's this this whole, it's just hard to, to fathom now how we found out about all this stuff back in the day when there was no internet. You know, all of a sudden, you know, you go and buy a UFO album and Shanker's not on there anymore. You're like, wait a second, what did I miss here? And then this shows up in the record bins and you're like, Oh, I guess he left the man. Right. And if you're reading the magazines, you find out months later and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, cry for the nations. So catchy. And again, you know, to Gary Barden, I think his best vocal performance on any album might be this one. I mean, the second album also is really, really good as well, but yeah, cry for the nations, good anthemic chorus and uh, great guitar solos as always on there. So yeah, rock it to the ground and cry for my name, cry for the nations eight and seven. I have a question for you. I just did a, a a Zoom call with a guy from Spain, David, who's writing a new wave of British heavy metal book. And, you know, one of the questions that he asked me was uh, various bands that belong to the new wave of British heavy metal. Do you think Michael Schenker Group is a new wave of British heavy metal band? Oof. Um, <laughs> technically, no. Does some of their stuff fit? Yeah. Like musically, if we were to say we don't we know nothing about Michael Shanker, we don't know he was in UFO and Scorpions and we just hear this album. Does this sound like a new wave of British heavy metal album? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. (laughs) Cool. All right. Uh, Okay. so uh, my number six choice is uh, Red Sky from this album, Built to Destroy. You know, we we did an episode on um, Guilty Pleasures, right? Um, and was it guilty pleasure bands or albums? I can't remember, but this is, I think this, this classifies as a guilty pleasure in the Michael Shanker group catalog. You're not supposed to like this album very much. Right. Right. And, uh, I just realized going through this exercise, like I had a lot of songs that I thought I could have put on this list. It's a very, it's very melodic album. It almost sounds like a breakup album. It's kind of morose, right? Um, Ron Nevison's production is kind of muffled on it. It's just, a Gary Barden sounds even like a little defeated on it. Um, it's just a, it's just a really sort of poignant kind of sad album. Um, but yeah, I, I went with red sky from this, uh, which is sort of a, um, 
Uh, it's a little bit of a, well, apocalyptic sort of uh, song, but it definitely has that Euro pump and circus pants uh, sort of idea to it as well. You know, din, 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 brown, you know, all that thing. Uh, so, so that's a cool one. Uh, and then I went with um, Lost Horizons from the debut, um, the Michael Schenker group Stargazer or their um, Cashmere. Uh, a little bit of both in it, I suppose. Um, but yeah, just a big epic. And we talked about how Memento Mori uh, covered that song as well. But it's just a really classy one. I, I generally don't go for slow songs. It kind of fought its way onto, onto this list. Um, but as slow songs go, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. We got the Simon Phillips drumming on here, the Roger Glover production. Roger's production isn't that great on this album. It's a little bit, he he almost brings a little bit of that sin after sin forward to it, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a little bit academic sounding, right? Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, I think the drumming does a lot to uh, to keep that song propulsive and moving along. There's a, well, that whole last thing. half of the song, right? Simon is just thundering away underneath, and Shanker soloing over the top. Of it. That's just breathtaking. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah absolutely. Go. All right, that was my six and five. Cool. My number six. Let's go to the second album. On and on. Uh, wonderful song. Good big heavy riff. Great use of uh, keyboards. I think you know you, you talk about the Built to Destroy album. I think for me. That album is missing a little bite. Like I remember when it first came oh, out, yeah. we're all kind of yeah. like, man, it's like it's not very heavy. There's a lot of keyboards, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think this album though balances the the keys and the the heaviness factor, and the, the songs are just really good. This is a very melodic album. You get cozy on this album, on and on. I always like, always one of my favorites from this album. So that is number six. And number five, we're gonna go with Samurai from Assault Attack. I absolutely love Samurai. Love it, love it, love it. Love the vocal on it. Great catchy chorus. And then the whole finale of the song is just absolutely amazing. Great riff on it. Terrific assault attack. You just can't lose with any song on there at all. So that's my all right. six and five. Well, I'll, I'll do you one better and move Samurai up to number four. So there, there we go. go. Love that song. Very Euro, very Richie Blackmore, very power metal. Um, just, just a good, you know, and that, and just that disciplined tight, performance uh coupled with the martin birch production it just makes it so cool and you've got the got the slinky graham bonnet bonnet alcatraz japanese uh kind of slight style uh you know to the vocal melody that he puts over top of the thing as well just does an, a, an amazing job with that um and then i'm gonna go back to um built uh built to destroy for a uh, rock my nights away which is just a <laughs> really sort of a melodic poppy but still up tempo it's it's a it's again it's it's got that cool thing we love about michael where he he can uh he can slide the uh the fulcrum a little bit between how euro he wants to be and how hair metal he wants to be right um and that's the just the great thing about his style it's a subtle style that combines these two things that aren't supposed to go together and it's there and gary barden's vocal performance again it sounds like he's just fighting for his life on it um and it's a little sad and uh, then there's the keyboards in there as well but yeah i just i just kept going through this album going man i i could have put a lot of songs off of this on there and that's not right you're not supposed to do that supposed um, to so yeah <laughs> it's a little motowny too that one some something about it hits me as a little motowny that song it's a little r&b kind of but uh but it, it it's a pop song it. Yeah, it, it totally, yeah, is. Dude, totally dude. Is. yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Carlton dance, right? It's the Carlton dance song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's it, all these years later, it's not a bad album by any means. Uh like I I torched it back in the day, but I you can listen to it now and say, ah, oh, this is actually pretty damn good. And it's funny because it's almost like he had to do that album for the next couple to happen, right? Because I think the Macaulay Schenker group albums are kind of like an extension upon that, but different. I, I find the Macaulay Shaker Group albums highly listenable these days. I put those yeah. on and I'm like, man, these songs are so good. It's yeah. nothing like the early stuff, but and it was very much of the time. But I think those are yeah. really, really good albums. So we got to mention as well, and, and I, I, I forget this story, but it's it's got the complicated remix and different vocalists and Derek and uh, in and out and all this stuff between the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, you know, kind of kind of like the the White Snake slide it in in 1987 thing, right? Um, yeah. It's got just these, and I don't even really hear much of a difference between them, or at least a little bit. I did kind of looking into this, but. But yeah, it's it, it's weird. Um, so not the, Derek, interesting, not to derail the conversation, mm -hmm. but I've often thought about it. So how do you think that album would have sounded or 
an album to follow with Derek St. Holmes on lead vocals on an entire album for Michael Schenker. Yeah. Yeah. He he could have, he could have definitely had a hit album, right? Um, yeah. With that, right? I would have I, loved I, to have heard it. Yeah. That's another thing. I forget the story of why Derek was in and out so quick, but uh, I, I have that story somewhere addled in the back of my mind, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it could have been a big hit album for him uh, as, as well, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. So are we, right. I'm at number back? four, right? Yeah. Number four. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the second album. Watch the attack of the mad X man. Dun, 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 dun. I re, you know, it's like, it's funny, Martin. I, I think like overall, it's not a great song, but man, what a guitar solo. This is like, this is one of those songs on my list that it's like, it's on here because of the guitar solo, that big heavy mm. person before the solo. And then he kicks in and just goes absolutely that shit crazy and that's what i to me this is attack of the mad x man is like msg's rock bottom basically and I, you know how much i love rock bottom so uh yeah mm -hmm. attack of the mad x man and it's it's such a great song to anticipate anytime you go see them live you know when they play it it's going to be one of the highlights of the show so yeah attack of the mad x men number four and then uh i'll do you another one uh, assault attack title track is my number three love it I mean, one of the great album openers and that, like you mentioned, that riff, that kind of circular riff, da -da 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 it's just so good. And that great angry vocal from Graham, wonderful, wonderful song. I almost ranked it higher because um, I just love it so mm -hmm. much. But yeah, uh, Attack of the Man, X-Man and Assault Attack 4 and 3. Okay, excellent. Okay, so I'm uh, going to the, uh, where is the copy here? Going back to the debut album for the first track on the album, Armed and Ready. I think it's just such a great concert opener album opener where you feeling right all that stuff right it's just so melodic and uh and catchy it's just absolutely uh irresistible um it's just uh just a really good uh anthem um the 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 it's you know the, the chorus or pre-chorus or whatever and then the halftime bit in it as well it's just a just a really good infectious uh like welcome to this new band uh sort of song i think they do a great job of it and then my number one is uh desert song uh from this album um it's absolutely their sales of sharon it's an absolute drop dead masterpiece um boy what else can you compare it to it's just it's just so so well done so graham bonnet um even more than michael shanker um but it's just this great disciplined band you know we got ted mckenna on drums here sadly we lost him chris glenn got to meet him and hang out with him at the at the bar last time they were here in toronto uh with all all those members in the band but uh yeah looking they're looking like rockers there it's a oh, good yeah. picture of graham right that's a yeah. that's one of the better pictures of graham um but yeah maybe, yeah, maybe the a, only photograph ever of him in a leather jacket yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah um but just an absolute masterpiece of a song and and yeah absolutely if you were to compare it to any you'd have to compare it to the sales of sharon as uh, as his masterpiece so there you go this is my two one it's funny, you look back, it's like, what if that fateful incident had never happened and that band had continued on with that lineup for another album or two or three or whatever, right? And yeah. no Alcatraz happens, Ingve Malmsteen never gets noticed, right? Could you just, it's weird how history <laughs> happens. If, if, if What if something, you know, different happened in that instance? So, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I almost, Armed and Ready was in my original top 10 and got booted uh, at the last minute. I love it. I think it's great. Everything you said about it is great. But I went with my number two, maybe a surprise, feels like a good thing. Hmm. That riff just slays me. It has been yeah. slaying me for yeah. 40 some odd years. It's just so, so good. Love the groove to the song. It's heavy. It's grinding. That's my number two. Feels like a good thing. And yeah, I mean, how can you not pick Desert Song? as number one it's incredible it's incredible i mean every song on this album is incredible but desert song is in a place of its own and there's a reason why you know anybody associated with this band at the time went off and would play this song in their other new respective bands and whatnot it's just it's so good uh such a classic song it's their sales of sharon it's it's lots of other songs it's it's the classic 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 track from this album i think most people would not argue that um and man the vocal is so good the guitars are amazing the rhythm section so locked in killer absolute killer desert song 
Number one for kind of like they're perfect strangers too, right? In in a yeah. way, right? I mean, you you think yep. of a uh, later awesome Deep Purple, it's a little bit like that song too, yeah. which is uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and you'll notice I I had nothing from this album, uh, although I have one in my honorable mention. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I've I've just always kind of had it in for this album with the with the Ron Nevison, you know, the 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 sort of puffy bulky production on it i i was never crazy about it um not crazy about cozy on drums i'm i i got a little bit of stick for a gold mine uh, thing that i did recently bands improved by drummers and i i talked about cozy in there for some stuff and i'm gonna be we're gonna do a con contrarians episode with uh, the great peter jones who's a drummer and he's been on a lot of our shows but he i think he's gonna take umbrage and we're gonna have a little bit of a cozy powell heated debate but uh yeah just uh, i i think he i think he just sounds loud and and, and brutish on this album and he kind of kind of overtakes it i had i had on and on in my um in my uh honorable mentions from this album but uh yeah i was just i i always kind of had it in for this album um it's it's not my favorite and and like i say i i could have picked more songs from assault attack and more songs from uh, the one you're not supposed to like uh and they would have they would have flooded in here as well but uh there you go you got any other honorable mentions martin well, yeah. What did, what else did I have here? I had uh, the dogs of war. I had, but I want more from MSG as well. And, uh, and on and on from MSG. And then I had evermore first track on arachnophobiac. I just love that same, same. It sounds like um, no turning back actually uh, in, in some ways, but again, great Chris Logan vocals. He's got this kind of angelic sublime thing that he adds to it, which really matches up with Michael's, just his way of playing his way of just being accessible without forcing it. It's just, it's literally part of his art. Yeah. You know, he can't help but be accessible. Right. That's just who he is. Right. Yep. Yep. For so, sure. Yeah. That's, that's all of them. Okay. What do I have? Uh, so I got armed and ready also from the debut. Uh, I've got, I'm going to make you mine from built to destroy. I always thought that was kind of a cool mm. fun song, but again, more yeah. of like, kind of like a pop song, right. But still really, yeah. really well done. Uh, Ulcer, the instrumental from assault attack is terrific. Wow. Uh, I really like, still love that little devil from Built to Destroy. Oh yeah, yeah, a good rocker. <laughs> Again, Derek's one, on yeah. that one, right? So I, I, yeah, yeah. I'm over the years. I'm kind of like that was always one of my favorites from that album. And I'm always kind of like, man, I would have loved to have heard a whole album with him on it. So uh, that's yeah. really good. Um, Captain Nemo from Built to Destroy is another good instrumental. Uh, I always like when Let Sleeping Dogs Lie from the MSG album. Victim Illusion is fun. It's kind of simple from the debut. And then from Written in the Sand, uh, how about Brave New World? Which I think is a pretty, pretty cool track from that album. That's that's not a terrible album either. That's got some good good songs on there as well. So yeah, those are my uh, honorable mentions. Cool. I, I don't know if I uh, I may have to do a correction here. Did I say Built to Destroy was Ron Nevison pr production? It's actually produced. It says produced and mixed by MSG and Louis Austin. Yeah, he's there's a name that usually I think he usually shows up as an engineer on stuff, right? Remastered at sound recording. Yeah, so yeah, but yeah, but Ron Nevison is is obviously definitely this one. Second so, album, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Great catalog, and then and, and there's and some of that some of that other stuff is amazing as well. He's good. He does some really Euro stuff, that Temple of Rock stuff, and he's got a real fast power medley one later on too, right? So he's he's kind of all over the place. And yeah, to, truth be told, I mean, three or four of those you you could have you could have put into this whole thing. But uh, yeah, Michael seems to it, it slips his mind to a name his band properly or name his records properly. It's like I don't care, right? Yeah, and, whatever he's doing at the moment, yeah. I yeah, personally, yeah. for me, I don't mind the Michael Shanker Fest name because those albums are it's like a festival of let's bring everybody back to yeah. do these albums. And to me, those are fun. I really enjoy those because he's got, you know, Gary Barden's on them. He's got Macaulay's on them, Doogie White's on them, Graham's on them. And they're just they're fun. And I enjoy those. Uh, and now he's back to using Michael Schenker group again. Right. Uh, and he's, but now he's basically, he's, uh, you know, he's got Ronnie Romero on there, Ralph Sheepers. And so he, it's, it's basically fest, but instead of old MSG guys, it's now I'm going to work with whoever I want to work with. So yeah, to me, just keep the fest thing going and every album can be you and whoever the hell you want it to be, because it's really not a group anymore, right? It's not like you're going to go out and tour with these specific people that are on the album. I don't know. It's just because I think, uh, if I remember correctly, I think on the last album, when he went out and did the tour, he played with Ronnie Romero in Europe and not here. And I think mm. 
Macaulay here? I don't remember. Because now Doogie White's doing the Alcatraz thing, so he doesn't have him to use anymore. I don't know. It gets all too confusing about who's doing what and who's following him, who's staying, who's going. I don't know. So it's and we must say what a monster Robin McCauley is. I mean, that guy is oh, just yeah. so vital, incredible singer again, a guy in great shape, you know, just looking young for his age, right? He's yeah. he's he's so talented, that guy, and he's making his albums for frontiers and whatnot as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So he, he's his voice has not things. lost a step. And when I saw the Shankerfest thing live a couple times, he was the best singer, hands down. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yep. you know, and you got totally some agree. you got some legends up there, right? I mean, you know, Graham held his own. Doogie's always really solid. Gary wasn't that good. I hate <laughs> yeah. to say it. Yeah. But uh, but Robin was, I mean, they were singing stuff off the Macaulay Shanker Group albums, and it was just like, holy shit, this is good. I mean, hearing those songs, I was like, I was, you know, goosebumps were going up and down my neck. I'm like, man, I'm enjoying this so much. And then singing the UFO stuff. And yeah, this guy's amazing. I mean, and he's he's getting up there in age too, right? He's in his 70s, yeah. I think, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. So for everybody watching uh, down in the comments below, list your 10 favorite Michael Schenker group songs, right? Kind of like what we did. Uh, if you want to draw from all the albums, go right ahead. And, you know, we, we drew from the albums we drew from, but then if, Hey, if you want to pick UFO songs as well, go right ahead. Cause that's a great catalog too. Right. We, we decided not to go there as well, cause that makes it even more hard, you know, cause uh, there's so many great uh, UFO songs that Michael played on, but yeah. So uh, Martin, uh, get us caught up to speed on what's new and happening in early 2024 on the contrarians and the podcast and books and things like that. Yeah, so we did uh, We did our typical uh, album cover show Wednesday night. It's always live at 7. Um, we did uh, albums that don't, uh, that do, how do, don't, yeah, don't sound like their album cover. And previous week was do sound like their album cover. Marco and I did another one of our uh, loopy kind of, uh, remember we did a hypnosis, uh, glitch in the hypnosis matrix. Well, we just yeah. did uh, one that goes up today called um, uh, What If Roger Dean Was a Punk? Um, so we took a bunch of punk uh, text and stuff and stuck them on Roger Dean covers <laughs> and talked about that. So that was that was fun. Uh, oh, and then, God, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we got a couple of good ideas uh, planned for that as well. Actually, we got three three more ideas to do with the uh, with the fooling around with album cover art. But uh, yeah, the um, the history and five songs uh, with Martin Popoff podcast. Um, I just did uh, one called uh, Genius and then one called A Different Kind of Genius. So those are the latest two of those. And martinpopoff.com for all the books. Perfect Water, the follow-up to Flaming Telepaths should be in in about a week or so. And uh, yeah, Flaming Telepaths, people just keep buying that one. People are really interested in that. So I'm, I'm fingers crossed that this one will do good because if it does, I'll, I'll maybe even do a third one. Wow. Um, yeah, because uh, but this one is this one is is off the charts, completely bizarre. But uh, but I've got some ideas to do one with, with some, some stuff that's almost similar to these that has nothing to do with music. So I might might do something mix it in like uh, it's a long story. I won't go do it into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have any uh, any big stock on on books that you've restocked that you want people to uh, spend their uh, extra Christmas money on? Yeah, you... I, I kind of restocked with everything. So uh, so the latest ones would be Kiss at 50, the Who one, the uh, the um, the David Bowie one. I still have I still have the Pink Floyd Dark Side uh, one as well. I, I realize I've got a box. The other one that keeps selling all the time is the merciful fate one. Um, and uh, I, I do have one full box of that left. So I got 30 of those that'll last me a while, but, uh, but got that one as well. And yeah, I, I had to put flaming telepaths back into print uh, again for probably the fourth time. So but I would yeah, say for those looks... watching who, if you have not read the merciful fate book, it's one of my favorites of Martin's. So I would highly, highly recommend reading that one. Really, really good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Cool. Nice. All right. Uh, let's see what do we got coming up here. So it's Friday, of course. So uh, our other weekly show on Friday is the professor's picks. So Ken Golden will be taking Martin's place in the Zoom in just a couple hours and giving you guys uh, all sorts of cool things that are going on sale today in the worlds of uh, Prague and metal and fusion. A lot of cool, a lot of cool stuff releasing today. So uh, be on the lookout for that 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. The UK Connection, uh, Stephen Reed and Simon Bray and myself will be talking about some albums that we love that are significant others or family members or friends or work colleagues. Every time we play them, they look to us and say, 
Will you turn that shit off? So that's what we're talking about later today. Really fun episode uh, tomorrow. I mean, uh, tomorrow afternoon. And then Sunday, Grant Arthur will be coming in and uh, he and I will be ranking the albums. Or it's, it's Yacht Rock Day on the channel, Martin. Pablo Cruz, the great Pablo Cruz, a fairly big band here in the U.S. for a couple of years in the 70s. They had a handful of hits and big selling albums and uh, pretty good albums, too. Very different kind of soft rock, pop rock type of thing. Pretty good stuff. So we'll be uh, ranking that catalog to seven albums. So that's coming up on Sunday. So uh, till then, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together. All the damn time for Martin Popoff, I'm P. Pardo. See you next week here at the Fun House. Have a good weekend, everybody. Until next time. Bye-bye.